welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today I'm talking to, to oh gosh, Nick, <laughs> to Shari. I'm talking to, to Shari, <laughs> to Shari McFarland. Okay, let's do it again, Nick. Sorry, Nick. Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today I'm talking to Tashari McFarlane, and she is the coordinator of Teen Maze. Welcome to the show, Tashari. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Now tell us, what is Teen Maze? Well, Teen Maze is an annual event for all Troop County ninth graders, and it's coming up right around the corner, October 28th and 29th this year. Um, and what it is, it's sort of an interactive game for all of our ninth graders here, where we try to teach them real consequences to real situations that they will face throughout their high school careers. Um, and with the help of many community partners, we just bring this together out at West Georgia Technical College and hope that the teens will be stimulated to think before they engage in risky behaviors. That is awesome. Yeah. Yes, and it's been five years since we yeah. have had teammates. This is the fifth year. And it's the first year that you will be the coordinator. Yes. Now tell me how that's been because this is a tremendously big project. And it I know you, you came through it last year yeah. to look at it and then you're off and running this year. Tell me yes. about that. Well, my first day on the job last year, I was actually at Team Maze. And to be there, I was just blown away by how big of an undertaking it was. But I had no idea of all the behind the scenes and little things that you have to do way in advance to, you know, actually get Team Maze going. So um, it's been quite the experience, <laughs> just yes. to say the least. Um, just um, coordinating things and getting things together but I mean it's been fun because along the way I've had lots of people just help out um, many people who've been on the steering committee before in the past and some new faces that have shown yes. up this year to step in I mean it's been a learning experience but it's been rewarding because just along the way parents have said oh man teammates teammates you know people recognize it but um just getting all the things together, it's been an experience, but you know, it's been one that I've enjoyed. Yes, a million details, yeah. right? A million little details. Yes. Yeah. All right, so now let's let's walk through the maze. But before we do, tell us what the goal of the maze is. Well, there are so many things that our teens will face throughout high school. And you know, though we can't touch on everything in all the 45 minutes that we'll be there, our goal for teammates is to get all of our teens here to graduate. And we target ninth grades um, at this point, but our goal is just to get our teens to graduate. And so we try to show them real consequences to situations that they may face in high school and hope that they'll, you know, think about these things before they actually get engaged in them. And so, you know, we don't want them to engage in things that will have them you know, give any hurdles to them graduating. We just want them to graduate without having experienced unnecessary things. And so that's our goal, let's just get all of our teens here in Troop County to graduate. Yes, I, I do think what they experience in, in the maze is impactful to yeah. them. Yes, now let's talk about the first thing. When they first come to uh, the yeah. Callaway Conference Center, they enter in and they go into the party scene. Tell us what yeah. that's about. You know, and I can almost speak as the kids because last year was my first time too. Just coming into the party scene is fun. Music is blasting and playing, just like if you would go to a party anywhere. Um, and the, our goal in there is just to get the kids to loosen up because that's the first scene of the day. Yes. And, um, but we also introduce real topics right in from off the bat in there um, about drinking and domestic partner violence and this year new we're just trying to add a little bit about gang violence in there um, that's been something that's been big in the news here lately yeah and we just want to make teammates relevant to our teens here so we just want to touch on those topics but the teens come in music's blasting and then all of a sudden they're hit with Oh no, what happens if, you know, yes. me and my partner get into it? Um, drinking and driving, drugs. We try to touch on all those little topics in there really quickly. But um, it's just the first thing where we have everybody together and so we're able to just start off with our information right then and there. So there are things on the table like pills on the yes. table, those kinds of things. And then um, it's, it's kind of to see if you would take of those things. Right. And then uh, there is a uh, disturbance that happens between right. a couple that's dating. And so the couple is dating and so that's where we want to um, get into partner violence because it's a real issue and you know we don't a lot of teens don't really want to talk about it but it's a real issue that happens with teens um, um, 
And we also this year we're focusing more on the drugs that we've surveyed and our teens are taking, marijuana. And yeah. people just think it's harmless and it's just this and it's just that. We're f putting a focus on that because that's what our teens are doing here. So um, Troop County Prevention Coalition has been great with just helping us focus on um, some of the drugs that our teens, uh, prescription drugs is another big thing because you can just go in grandma's cabinet and yeah. you know get some of those things. So we're focusing um, on things that are you know, hidden home here in Troop County. But yeah, um, some of those things that we've done in the past, we're still doing, and we just want to add a little bit more just to um, make it relevant to our teens here. Yes, so. and um, you know, how how big is that problem here? Um, well, when we start, when Troop County Prevention Coalition surveyed our teens here, um, the number one drug that they use, um, well, illicit drug is marijuana. And other than that, it's alcohol. Um, and prescription drugs are so easy to get because you can go into your mom's cabinet, dad's cabinet, anybody's cabinet. And so um, it's a little bit harder to go in the streets and buy other things, but we, they found that those things are the easiest for them to get. And so, um, and since it's easiest, that's the things that they use the most here. So yes. it's a bigger problem than people realize here. Yes, but we want to say that, you know, all teens are not are not using Definitely drugs. Not. Definitely yeah, all, not all teens. Yes. Not, and, you know, and team A's, um, we try to get all of our ninth graders there because, of course, we know some will, some won't. But yes. we want to make sure we have an impact on those who are on the fence and yes. they don't know. And we just want to share more information with them. So if they are on the fence, we can give them right information to help them make that a better decision. Yeah, so. that is great. All right, so the next scene that happens yeah. is the mock rack. Oh my gosh, I tell you, that scene there, I mean, my first time going through it, it literally put tears in my eyes. Um, the teens are leaving from the party scene where it's all upbeat, and then they actually just enter into a mock wreck scene um, with the help of the police department, the Grange Fire Department, and AMR Ambulance Services. And um, they do an excellent job of recreating what would actually happen if um, someone was if someone was drinking and driving. Yes. And, um, the teens get to observe the police department in action responding to the whole event and the ambulance service responding to the whole event. And I mean, it's realistic. Yes. And it's a real consequence that could happen if the teens actually do drink and drive. So we, I mean, I don't know. It was very impactful to me. And I, in just looking at some of the teens last year, you could see their faces and some of them were just, you know, slapped in the face by, oh my God, this yes. could really happen. Yes, it could. So. And and also, um, in some of the years, I know there's been a, a mother yeah. that's arrived at the scene and and her, yeah. her reaction to seeing that her child has been killed. Right. And, and so, you know, sometimes maybe we don't think about how it would impact other people, right. our actions would impact other people, but it it's a loss to the community when right. that happens. And that, you know, again, that's what teammates is to do, is stimulate teens to think, because it might not be you, but you might harm someone's family, yes. remember, someone's sister, someone's mother, someone's daughter, someone's friend. And so, you know, it's not just you, it's the whole community that's affected by drinking and driving. And so we want teens to realize that it's, you know, you could have a wreck, you could get a ticket, or you could hurt someone. Yeah. So, so the, the next thing ties into that. Right. And it's it's where they get an opportunity to drive um, yeah. with with glasses on that make them think that they are are drinking right. to a certain level. And it's a, a golf cart that they drive through mm -hmm. and there are cones there that they knock down. Tell us about that scene and also what happens as a result of them driving and drinking. Okay, well the teens um, get to use our drunk goggles and um, it simulates what it's like to actually be drunk. Yes. Um, I've used the goggles in other places and adults, you know, wobbly when they're, so I mean, yes. being under the influence of alcohol greatly impacts your ability to drive or operate any type of vehicle, so. Um, we have the teens put on the goggles, and with the help of the police department, they um, just go through um, kind of an obstacle course of cones outside and um, see how well they can drive with the goggles on. Um, and also at this scene, we touch on texting and driving because that's just, just as dangerous. In yes. fact, um, you're 23 times more likely to have a crash if you're texting while driving. Um, distracted driving is a huge problem. You know, you can be at the stop sign and see people looking down at the phones or, yes. you know, anywhere. So, I mean, it's a huge problem. So we touch on both of those right there at that station. 
And um, depending on the amount of cones that you knock down, that's, you know, you could be hitting somebody. You could hit a house, yeah. hit a car. And so from then on, that determines where you go after you leave that scene. So um, some people will go to jail and some might end up hurting themselves or hurting someone else. And so it just determines where you go after you leave that scene. But, I mean, it's a it's a eye opener because, you know, a lot of teens, if they have not drank before, it lets them know what it would be like to actually drink. Yes, and there is a real effective uh, video on the Internet right. with texting and driving mm -hmm. where it says, you know, if you're texting and driving, it's like having your eyes shut for, I think it's five seconds. And people don't realize that's that. right yeah. and and it actually takes you through like a blackout of, of what it's like mm -hmm. for to text and drive you know even though you feel like it's just a minute or right or whatever um, you know when you look down sometimes you get really involved in what exactly in what that text and you know is saying or what you're uh, exactly. trying to communicate exactly and you never know what could happen in that you know blinking of an eye that you're looking down someone could you know a kid could run out in the street or you know you accidentally swerve open to the next you never know what's happening so texting and driving and pretty much all teens have phones nowadays so we definitely want to hit on that because you know that's a huge issue and you know not just teens adults too yes and so this is something that we want them to carry on from teens to adulthood and maybe even share with their parents or in someone they see um, texting and driving so you know it's a huge thing because we all, I mean, I think it, we've all done it before and it's dangerous. Yes, it really is it dangerous. Is. But that, so. that video really brings it home to how mm -hmm. dangerous it is. So, um, you know, people are really trying to communicate to us that that's dangerous and we need right. to stop it if we're doing right. it. Right, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, um, all right, if they're drinking and driving and they knock down the cones, then what happens to them? All right, well, some of our teens will go have to go to our judicial system. Um, and it's somewhere we don't want any of our teens to end right. up in real life. But some of them will have to go there, get fingerprinted, get their mug shots taken. And um, we have judges there to talk to them about what happens if you actually get caught drinking and driving. Um, and what could happen in the future as you get older. Because, you know, the consequences are a little different from teens than adults. So um, just looking towards the future, what could happen to yes. you? Yes. Um, and some of teens, sadly, they get killed in car wrecks because it happens. Right. Um, and Stryfel and Hambly has been excellent. I mean, they are. They, um, and they, they set up a whole funeral scene where you actually have to go to your own funeral. And that's a really sobering experience, especially if you've experienced the loss of any loved one. Yeah. You know, it's a really sobering experience, and you have to write your own eulogy. And um, it's read to you while you're looking down in a coffin at your reflection in a mirror. And, I mean, it's really impactful because you don't think about these things. You know, when you're young, you think you're invincible. And, you know, me dying, it'll never happen, but it could happen. Yes. And so um, some move on. And then some are lucky, and they, you know, dodge the bullet that time, and they get to move on to their first date, so they come on inside. Yes. And, you know, I, I work in that funeral scene, mm -hmm. and it, it is very sobering. Because as a young person, you just feel like, you know, you're going right. to live a long life. Right. But, and you're just working through your life, and then all of a sudden, it's like, gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, you know, you don't think about that as a teen. Yeah. You know, I didn't think about it as a teen, but then, you know, it could happen. And, you know, sadly, it has happened in our community. Yeah. So, you know, we just want our teens to realize these are real things, and these are, you know, they, our ninth graders may be too young to have their driver's license right now, but they'll be getting them, and they'll be on the road with other teens. And so we just want them to know that this stuff could happen. Yes. And, you know, but there are ways to prevent it. You don't have to get in the car drinking and driving. You don't have to text and drive. And we just want to drive that point home with our teens. Yes, and you don't have to ride with somebody who's drinking. Exactly. That's very important. And I know that that might take a lot of strength to say, yeah. you know, no, I, th I think I'm going to yeah. ride in another car or whatever, but it's very yeah, it important to do that. Yes. And it takes a lot of strength to actually do something about that person who who's getting in the car, but yes. you could save their life. Right. You know, and you could save the life of someone else. So, I mean, all these things, you know, you, you, th you take that first drink, you don't think about all this stuff. Yeah. But we want our teens to think about all of these things that could happen. So Yes, and it really opens it up for them to be able to talk about it and right. discuss the different consequences right. 
and to feel the impact of it right. um, in a safe environment. So you mentioned that they go to the date scene. Yes. Tell me about the dating scene. Well, the dating scenes are the teens get to experience what many of us have experienced on dates. You experience peer pressure and, you know, many of the, you know just the things that could happen on a date yes. um the first date um you know like hey it's here you're here you're going on your first date with somebody that you really really liked for a long time and um some of the teens will give into peer pressure and ha actually have sex yeah and so that goes on to another gamut of consequences that could happen and some don't and they get to move on to another date so um but We've all been there, been on the date, been nervous, and yes. we just, you know, and these are things that are starting to happen with that, our teens. Now they're getting a little bit older, more, you know, responsibility. So um, moving on to the first date and second date, um, and some have sex and get pregnant, and so they go on to those consequences. Yes, so. and and so that happens um, through a script that they right. draw that they draw from a little right. can that's on the table, right. and then that determines whether. Uh, they are one of those that did participate in yes. sex or not. And yes. so uh, if they did participate in sex, um, what happens in the maze for them? Well, I'm glad you mentioned the scripts because, you know, each team pulls the scripts from the table and that determines where they're going to go um, right. at each station. Um, you know, in real life we do have choices, but here it's chosen for you so you can just, you know, experience these different things. So if you do um, have sex, um, Two, you know, several things could happen, but in our teammates, the teens could actually get pregnant. Yes. And they can move on to our pregnancy clinic where they would have to go through the stages of pregnancy um, and experience what it's like to be pregnant. They actually have to wear the pregnancy bellies mm -hmm. around um, and just, and experience what it's like to be pregnant. And we have amazing help from LaGrange College again this year, West yes. Georgia Technical College, and other nurses from the school system and Troop County Health Department over there to talk through the two different stages and tell them what it's like and tell them what you're experiencing. Um, and you know, several, I mean, anything can happen during pregnancy. And so some of them go on and go through adoption and some of them lose their babies because yes. you know, you don't think about these things. You think you're gonna have this beautiful, healthy baby and whatever, but some, you know, a lot of things can happen. And so they actually, some who finish pregnancy get to carry the babies around. We have the lifelike babies that they, um, are crying and everything, and you have to carry them around, and the carriers are kind of heavy. I, yes. you know, I look, we've been moving those things around now. Yes. Yeah, they are like heavy right. babies. So, I mean, but it's real. You know, you have to, you know, you have to consider that. And um, another consequence is a uh, consequence that teens don't think about because they think about getting pregnant is STDs. Right. Um, STDs are real, especially here in Troop County. They're real, and in fact, um, one in two people who have sex will get an STD oh, before really? age 25, by wow. age 25, one and two. So that's half. Wow. So, and that's a huge number. And that's, you know, CDC reports and numbers are same here in Georgia. So one in every two people who engage in sexual activity will contract an STD by age 25. And our teens don't realize that. So you could be that one and two. So we, um, and so since that is a very real consequence that's right. here, and you see it all the time here, um, and young people especially, um, they have to go to our STD clinic. And we do have nurses there, nurses, students there to talk through um, what it's like to contract an STD, the cost of treatment. And we have them walk through the real pictures of STDs. We don't just tell them about it, you get to see real pictures of it. So, um, you know, because it's definitely not something we want our teens to have to experience there. But um, those are the consequences, some of the consequences that you could face, you know, and of course we can't touch on all the emotional things that you could yes. go on, but you know, these are some of the physical cons consequences that could happen. Yes, and also um, when they experience like a pregnancy, mm -hmm. they they get to uh, figure out a budget, right? Yeah. How, how they're gonna make their money yeah. work or how they're gonna get money yeah. to support their baby. and Exactly. And that involves going to DFACS and going to the bank. Medicaid. And, med and, and all those things mm -hmm. that a teen would not want to. And doesn't think about. Yeah. You, know, you have this baby and you think, oh, it's gonna be pretty and cute and we're gonna dress them up, but you know, you know, who's going to keep your child if you want to continue school? Who's going to keep it? And how much is it going to cost? And who's to say you're going to have help? You know, because we do have scenarios where the, the um, father of the baby's there and sometimes he's not there. Right. And so, you know, 
um, these are real things that could happen and who, you know, who knows? Yeah. And so we just try to get them to see that if you do do these things, you have to go through all these different steps. And, you know, we have our bank there this year. We have PNC Bank and Calumet Bank there with us um, to go through that, you know, budgeting. If you only make so much money with the, you don't even have a high school education, you're only going to make so much money. What are you going to do? How can you afford these things? So um, teammates touches on all these different aspects that the teens probably don't even think about. You know, and some adults don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I know the teens <laughs> don't think about it. So, I mean, all these things go into it. And all these things can impact the rest of your life. Yes. Just one decision can impact everything. And we want our teens to see that. Yeah, in the last few years, I've seen some statistics that say that most teens are not having sex. Most teens are not having sex. And most teens aren't having, you know, doing drugs either. So. Yes, and, and so that is a real encouraging thing to say. Um, and also, I want to share something that I've seen on a survey, too, that um, when young people choose not to have sex, mm -hmm. uh, they've been asked, you know, what made you choose to, to not have participate mm -hmm. and they said it's because our parents ask right. us not to right and so you know I just think that sometimes as parents we don't realize the influence we have on yes. our teens yes because sometimes it's a, a push and pull uh, in the family mm -hmm. during the teenage years yeah. <laughs> but Definitely. you know if the parents would have those talks exactly. with their young people and have the courage you know to to say, I, I don't want you to have sex. Right. Please don't have sex until you're right. married. It would make such a difference in the teen's life. And I, you know, I just feel like parents need to know that so that they are mm -hmm. empowered. And you know, we do do surveys with our uh, our teens. Um, we do pre surveys just to see what kind of general information they know about sex and where they're getting their information yes. from. And most of our teens are getting their information from parents. That's great. And so, um, you know, and of course they're getting it from other sources, siblings and friends and TV and stuff, but you know, most of them are getting it from parents. And so, um, parents play a, a huge role in yes. shaping the future of their kids. And so, um, you know, and some of the topics that we touch on, um, STDs, pregnancy, these things are kind of touchy topics for pa some parents to talk yes. about. But we hope that with teammates, we can open up the door for the, you know, the teens to go home and just talk about these things and, you know, just open up the line of commun communication with our kids. Um, in fact, I had a parent yesterday, and this is my first year coordinating, but it's just rewarding because I know people are getting something from it. Right. A parent yesterday told me that her two teens went through teammates a couple of years ago and they just came home and told her all about it. And you know, that's that's amazing because that's our yes. goal. Because you know, our kids see these things, we want them to take them on. She even remembers the scenarios that her kids went through. Yeah. Um, and her son got pregnant and had to go through uh, the you know, the pregnancy belly. Yeah. But you know, just telling about it. Um, she remembers these things. So he remembers them. And so that's what we want to do because, you know, once they know they can share the word with someone else. And so, I mean, that's the impact of Team A's and that's what it's having on Troop County. And so that's what we want to keep doing. That's right. And they get a souvenir booklet. They do. And uh, the souvenir booklet traces their path right. through the maze and, and they uh -huh. even get their picture made if they, if they die. Right. And they come and have their funeral preached or right. uh, if they graduate, they right. get their picture made at different points. I think maybe if they go to jail, they get their mug picture shot. made. Yeah, their <laughs> mug shot. Yeah. So it, it's really a nice souvenir and right. um, a remembrance. And it would be easy to tell their parents right. what happened. And, you know, lots of times you ask your children what happened at school today. <laughs> and so yeah. particularly when they go through Teen Maze, yeah. that would be a great opportunity right. to to start that conversation right. and let because, them tell you. Because at each station, um, the kids do get scripts. And so at each station, whatever script they get, it's glued into the book. And so that way they can just track each thing that they went through and just tell the story, you know, and they can remember it and they can tell their parents or friends or whoever. But um, just like I said, that story yesterday, it means that teammates is having an impact on people. Because, I mean, you can definitely tell if someone's remembering stories from two years ago and remembering pregnancy bellies and yes. you know, all these things. Um, it's having an impact. Right. And you know, it's opening up the line of communication between parents and their children. So that's what that's what we want to do. Okay, so the goal of the maze is to graduate. Our goal is to graduate. Yes. yes. So tell me what happens when they graduate. 
Well, you know, like I said, when these our kids are in ninth grade, and when you get in ninth grade, you're thinking that graduation is so far off. And some of our kids have, you know, gone through some things that they think they may not graduate. Yes. But we want them to know what it feels like to graduate. I mean, that's a special experience for anyone who's ever yes. gone through it. Um, and so they get to put on the cap and gown. Um, we have the pomp and circumstance plan, so they hear the music and they get to walk across the stage. Um, they receive a team A's diploma and they hear the name called out of the PA system. So everybody claps when yes. they hear the name called out. And um, we've had great participation with the principals from each school coming and shaking hands and taking pictures with the teens in their cap and gowns. And you know, they get to take that picture home with them. And they get to remember that experience right. because you know, some of the teens, like I said, they don't, they're not thinking about graduation. They're thinking, oh man, I'm getting to high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't, you know, some of these things that happen at teammates could impact your graduation. You could not graduate. So we just want them to realize that, you know, all these things that we're putting you through here, we don't want you to experience in real life. That's we right. want you to get to that real stage and at Callaway Stadium out there and hear your name called for real. And so that's why we have the graduation scene because that's our goal in real life. And um, that's what we want our teens to actually have to experience and feel that accomplishment of yeah, that. Yeah, and it plants that dream. Yeah, yeah, it plants that seed. So that's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. Okay, so after they have gone through the maze, there are some counselors mm -hmm. available in case they have questions or right. if something was disturbing to them through the right. maze that they can talk it over and it's counselors from the school system so they they know those counselors right and you also have some people there that uh, talk to them about their education right. and furthering their education. Tell me who that will be. Well, this year we um, are very grateful to have Think Academy there. Um, of course, they've opened up this year, and I mean, that's just an amazing school. Um, yes. And I hope everyone gets an opportunity to go out there and see it. So Think Academy is going to be there. And they've been a great job, doing a great job helping sponsor um, teammates this year. Um, but they'll be there to just tell them, you know, about opportunities they can have actually now to help further their careers. Um, West Georgia Technical College, of course, will be there um, and have a representative there. Um, we have a representative from LaGrange College who will be there um, just to discuss, you know, you know, just have the kids look towards to, for it to the future because, you know, high school is right now, but what are you going to do afterwards? Right. So um, LaGrange College will be there. Um, we also have people there. Um, to discuss career opportunities. We have the Department of Labor there um, to talk about, you know, where the job fields are going and where you're going to need to get, you know, what kind of education and everything you're going to need. Um, we actually have someone from Columbus Family Connection there who's talking about um, what it takes to, you know, actually raise families and this money, so what you need to do to get this money. Yes. Um, and we have, uh, we have, who else is going to be there? We have several other people. Oh, Calumet Bank is going to be there because all these things take money. So we do have um, a representative from Calumet Bank there who's going to talk about um, um, uh, earning, yeah, yeah. And, uh, earning potential. Yes. Um, Ver, you know, high school diploma versus degree versus not having anything at all because all that impacts how much you're going to make and what type of lifestyle you're going to have. So we just want at the end to just culminate and, you know, look towards the future. So yeah, we have all those people there at the end. Thank you, Tashari. Thank you And thank so you much. for all you do in thank the community. You. It's right. wonderful. We look forward to seeing you all October 28th and 29th. Yes. And thank you for watching You Make the Difference. And remember, you truly do.